Hi, in this video we're going to look at two ways to add reverse polarity protection for DC powered supplies to a circuit. But first, why do we need polarity protection? Many ICs, like op-amps, have limits to their supplies. These are stated in the maximum ratings in the datasheet. If you go beyond them, you will risk damaging the chip. The easiest way to break them is by simply reversing the expected polarity on the supply pins. Another example is polarized bypass capacitors, like electrolytic or tantalum capacitors, on the power rails. Reversing the DC polarity on these can cause permanent damage or in some cases explosions. To make sure our circuits won't get damaged, we implement reverse polarity protection at the input of the DC supply. Reverse polarity most often happens due to human error. For example, DC operated circuits will tell you what polarity they want on their DC socket. This is shown by a symbol that tells you what part of the connector is positive and what part is negative. For example, if it shows that the center is a minus sign, then you need a negative center power supply. Sadly, there is no standard, and some devices choose for a negative center and other for a positive center. And to make matters worse, the connectors have no way of stopping you from inserting the wrong polarity. So when this happens, your device might break or it is saved by reverse polarity protection. The first type of protection we will discuss is a commonly used tactic of placing a diode in parallel to the input of the power supply. When the polarity is right, the diode is reverse biased and does nothing so the circuit works just fine. But when the polarity is reversed, the diode is forward biased. Now how does this protect the rest of the circuitry? What happens is that the diode shorts the power supply back to ground and so bypasses the circuit. This seems great, the diode is the big hero, but wait. We are shorting a power supply across a diode. It doesn't take a lot of calculations to see that this will cause a big current to flow through the diode. Here are some scenarios that could happen. 1. The external power supply is smart. It detects an overcurrent situation and lowers its output voltage to protect itself. 2. The external power supply is rather dumb, but has a fuse that blows. 3. The external power supply is very dumb and something breaks inside of it. 4. The diode breaks due to the excessive power it has to deal with. If it breaks, two things can happen. Usually, the diode becomes a short. When this happens, the diode relies on the fuse to blow, like described in scenario 2, or the PSU breaks. In rare cases, the diode becomes an open circuit. When this happens, the reverse polarity can just pass through the rest of the circuitry with ease and damage it nonetheless. 5. The diode and the power supply handle the stress just fine and nothing happens. This type of polarity protection is often used in guitar pedals that use a battery clip. Both of the terminals are exposed and there's a 50% chance you put the battery wrong on the clip. These are often very short moments of reverse polarity because the clip doesn't allow you to actually connect the battery as its design is asymmetrical. The parallel diode will only short the battery briefly so there is not a lot of chance it gets actually damaged. Sadly, along with the battery clip, pedals also often have a DC input. And they decided to make these connectors center negative, while many other devices use center positive. So there's a chance you have quite some DC adapters at home that are center positive, and you want to connect it to your pedal. Now when you have connected it, you find out that your pedal doesn't turn on, and many seconds have passed. There's a big chance something broke now. But then there are some people who think they were very clever. They added a resistor in series with the DC input, so when reverse polarity occurs, the current through the diode is somewhat limited. This could ironically be called protection of the protection diode. Some people choose a low value for this resistor, which makes sense. In normal operation, that resistor is there too, and you don't want to drop a lot of voltage across it. But a simple calculation shows that you need at least 275 ohms of series resistance to make sure a quarter watt resistor itself doesn't fill when it's trying to protect the diode. When using surface mount resistors, 
you have to be even more careful because a simple 0805 resistor is often rated up to 125 milliwatts. So what you can do is choose a more expensive, higher power resistor so you can lower the resistance further. But these often get a little more expensive and require more board space. One of the few advantages of the series resistor is that it makes an RC low pass filter with the decoupling capacitors for better filtering of the power supply. Still, some people use an undervalued resistor like 47 or 100 ohms on purpose to make it behave like a fuse when a reverse polarity condition is met. But sadly, every time you blow the resistor, you have to replace it, which might be annoying. That's when other people who thought they were even more clever replaced the whole resistor with an actual fuse. But then you need to have to buy a new fuse each time you blow it by accident. So then it might be worth it to replace the fuse with a resettable fuse or polyfuse. These go high resistance quickly when they heat up due to the large current flow and thus restricts the current flow to the circuit. And after cooling down for a while, they go back to being a low resistance wire and you can try again with the right polarity. Now the second type of reverse polarity protection takes the doubt and puts it in series with the input voltage. When the polarity is right, the doubt will be forwards biased and the circuits get powered. When the polarity is wrong, the doubt is reverse biased and no current will flow. Now this is all there is to it. No extra resistors or fuses are needed, even though the latter is always part of a safe design. The only drawback is the voltage drop across the doubt due to the forward voltage. Assuming we have a power supply of 9 volts, we will lose about 600 millivolts when using a generic silicon diode. This is a loss of voltage or headroom of about 6.7%. But of course, you can easily substitute the diode with a Schottky type, reducing the voltage drop to about 200 millivolts. This is a reduction of only 2% of the 9 volt supply voltage. But make sure that the diode is rated for the current your device draws in normal operation and check the maximum reverse voltage for when a reverse polarity event occurs. Now let's compare the two types of polarity protection. First, the advantages of the parallel diode. 1. It does not drop any voltage unless a series resistance is used. 2. With series resistance, it makes the power supply filtering a little better. The disadvantages are 1. A high chance to break the doubt or the power supply. 2. If the doubt fails, there's a chance the circuit will still be damaged by reverse voltage. 3. With series resistance, there's a chance that the resistor will fail. 4. A significantly big resistance is needed or a higher wattage package if you don't want the resistor to fill. 5. This resistor will sometimes drop more voltage than a serious shot kit diode at the same amount of current flow during normal operation. 6. Adding fuses or polyfuses might get expensive. Now the advantages of the series polarity protection. 1. There's a very low chance of failing in both normal operation and when the reverse voltage occurs. And the disadvantages are that depending on the choice of diode, there's a small voltage drop which reduces available voltage to the circuit. I hope this video helps you understand basic reverse voltage protection and the two simplest ways to achieve it. Personally, I always use the series diode because it has way less drawbacks than the parallel diode and is pretty much a foolproof way of adding polarity protection to your circuits. Thanks for watching this video. Like and subscribe if this video was useful. And see you in the next one. Bye!